So it's a new month. It's already February. Can we believe it? And so that means another time. Whoa. All wrong. Hello everybody, my name is Kelsey and we're about to get very, very nerdy with February's Basket of Wreaths. It's, it's February already. How did we get here? But that means it's time to do another TBR dip into the basket of reads to see what we're going to be reading in February. And by we, I mean me. So if you are new to the basket of reads, my TBR game, do not worry. I will leave links above last month's TBR where I went over some new rules and kind of what the game is all about. So go check that out if you are new. But if you're not, welcome back. And we're going to get right on in to February's TBR. So I'm going to see if I can try to get as many romance books in this month as I can because it's February. I like to read a lot of romance this month. But we'll see how nice the picks are to me to see if we can do that. So let's get into it. But before we pick what we're going to read this month, let's take a quick look at how we did last month. So last month I didn't have any punishment picks because it was the beginning of a new year. We were doing some new rules. So I started with a blank slate. So we had eight books to read last month. These are the physical ones that I have. And I was able to complete seven of the eight. However, there is one that I didn't finish. But that's okay because we still have a few days left in the month as of recording this and I for sure will finish it by the end of the month. Let's just check in to see how I did with last month's TBR. So the very first one that I picked out was a book not set in the US and I ended up reading The Bear and the Nightingale, which I did complete. And then we had a random shelf number and we got to my manga slash graphic novel shelf. So we picked the first volume of Emma, which I have completed. Then we had to read an ebook, which I picked Make Up Break Up by Lily Minnan, which I completed. And then we had a book that will make you smile. And for that, I picked My Calamity Jane by the Lady Janie Cynthia Hand, Brody Ashton, and Jody Meadows, which I completed. Then we had to read a fantasy, which was The Clockwork Princess by Cassandra Clare, which I did complete. Then we had Husband Pick, which was this lovely big boy here, which is The President is Missing by Bill Clinton and James Patterson. Then I had read a book that was published within before five years ago. So we picked Among the J Knights by Deborah Yafe. This is the one that I'm still currently reading, but for sure we'll finish by the end of the month. And then we had a book picked by my parent. So we got to meet my dad and pick, he picked Educated by Tara Westover for me, which I completed. So pretty decent size as far as some of the chunkier books last month, but I did pretty much all of them and I'm really proud of myself. So let's get right in to February's first pick. Pick number one. This one. Read a book out of your comfort zone. So the very first book that we have is to pick a book that is out of my comfort zone. I don't have very many that I own that are out of my comfort zone, but there is a few. And the one that I have picked is one that was gifted to me by a very good friend who reads totally different than me. So we're going to see how this goes. And this is All the Missing Girls by Megan Miranda. This is a thriller and it follows a girl named Nicolette who 10 years before the events of this book left her hometown because she broke off her engagement with a guy she was going to marry and her best friend went missing. But now her dad is not doing so hot, so they have her come back. And then another girl goes missing, very, very similar to how her friend went missing. And there's a lot of things that happen. But I'm, what I'm most excited about this book is that it's told in reverse. And I'm so curious how that's going to work. So thriller, not usually my thing, trying to read more mystery this year. But I'm also a scaredy cat. So if this is too much... We'll see what happens. Might be only reading this when it is light outside. But that's my out of my comfort zone pick. I've never read anything by this author. It just sounded interesting and my friend picked it out for me. So we'll trust her and see how well her taste aligns with mine. <laughs> but yes, the first pick of the month. Not necessarily a romance book, but I'm okay with that. Pick number two. Mm, this one.
which is, ooh, a TBR vet. So the next prompt was TBR vet, um, which is a book that's been on my TBR for a very long time. And I actually did a video about some of the books that have been on my shelf for a while. So I just had a quick look at that one. Um, and this was the first one in that video. And also on my list of books I wanted to read by the end of the year. I think it's the standalone list. So that's great. I'm excited. Let's see how we do. Um, but that is After Alice by Gregory Maguire. This author is mostly known for the Wicked series. And this is a standalone that is kind of a reimagining of Alice in Wonderland. He does a lot of reimaginings of stories. And this one's pretty thin, but I want to get into his writing again. I have read Wicked, but it was in high school, like younger high school. And I don't think I even knew what was happening half of the time. So I want to get into his books and I thought this would be a good way to step into them and see if his writing really is for me now that I have a better idea of what I like and I am a little bit older and I feel like I will understand his writing a little bit more. Um, literally know nothing about what this book is about except for that it's a reimagining of Alice in Wonderland. And that's all we know. But it's a really cool cover because like this is like see-through. So if you look at the cover, it's like a map. So it's so cool. But uh, yeah, this was on my list of books to read by the end of the year. It's for sure a TBR vet. I've had it for years. And I also had my eye on it for years before I even picked it up. So we'll see how it goes. Pick number three is this one. Which is read a book written by more than one author. So the next one is to read a book that is by more than one author. Um, so this book that I decided to go with is one that you guys haven't seen yet because I haven't hauled it yet because I quite literally just picked it up. Um, and that is Dear Haiti, Love Elaine by Maika and Maritza Mulit, who is a sister writing duo. I honestly don't really know what this is about. Like I did at one point and now I have forgotten, but I know it is mixed media. So this basically follows our main character, Elaine, who Something happens like a prank goes wrong and so she's kind of shipped off to her family in Haiti and she's uncovering her family history, Haitian history, learning a lot about herself as well as her own family. So I'm really intrigued because I've heard a lot of really great things about this. Um, Haley from Haley and Bookland swears by this book and loves this book so much and I'm also curious to see how those mixed media things like the text messages like that's a letter right there, emails web searches, things like that. I think she also keeps a journal as well, so I think we're going to see journal entries in this as well. But I'm curious to see how all that's going to play into the story. And I really don't know much more slash don't really want to know much more than that, so I'm excited. Pick number four. Mm, this one. All right. Oh, read or listen to an audiobook. The next one is to read or listen to an audiobook. So I had to get this author duo in here because I love them so much. And that is Christina Lauren. And this one is my favorite Half Night Stand, which I was able to find an audiobook both on Scribd and at my library. So either way, I will be able to read this audibly somehow. And I do really like their books. They're fun. And this one also has like somewhat of mixed media format because there is text messages. And of course, now that I'm going through, there we go. There are like text messages intermixed within the plot line. But I love the romances. They're so much fun. And I do want to own slash read all of their books at some point. And this just happens to be the next one that I have that I'm the most interested in. So we're going to give it a shot. So this follows Millie, who is just one of the guys. She has four really, really great guy friends, and all five of them are university professors in Santa Barbara, and they're all perpetually single. But when a university function becomes a black tie gala event, they all go on dating apps to get dates, and our main character happens to, like, match with one of the other guys named Reed, and they spend a night together and then decide that they should just be platonic, but obviously feelings and things are going to emerge. And I, this just sounds really interesting. And also again, I freaking love these authors. They're so good. So of course I had to get a Christina Lauren book on my February TBR because who would I be if I didn't do that? Pick number five. This one. Which is 
Ooh, booktube made me. So the next prompt is booktube made me. And for me, that's a book or a book series or just something that I picked up because I've discovered it on YouTube or booktube or a booktuber told me about it. But booktube is the reason I'm interested in this book or ended up picking up this book. So for this prompt, I'm going to go with A Princess in Theory by Alyssa Cole. This is the first in her Reluctant Royals trilogy, which are all companion novels. And I had seen this floating around a little bit. I really want to say the first place that I heard about this series and this author was Cece from Problems of a Book Nerd, I believe is her channel name. And, but like the reason I picked up this series in all honesty, is because of Zoe from Zoe's All Booked freaking raves about this trilogy and is like, I feel like it's her goal in life to get everyone to read this series. So I picked these up because of her, because of her excitement and enthusiasm, and they just sound like awesome, fun royalty romances, which I love. So basically, this follows our main character, Nalita, who I'm not sure where she lives, but she lives in the US and she keeps getting these emails that she's been betrothed to an African prince and she's like that is spam except for that she actually is and so the prince comes to the US to kind of court her bring her back so that she can get married but when they meet she doesn't realize who he is and it sounds like it's going to be kind of like a prince in disguise eventually telling her that he's a prince and she becomes a princess kind of situation but they fall in love with her not knowing that he is a prince that is that is my theory when it comes to this book but I'm just so excited because it sounds amazing and I've had these on my list for a long time and I'm glad that I can finally get around to reading them. So this is the first one and I'm excited and it's just super cute and tidy. Ooh, so that had to be on my list and that for sure had to be that pick. Book six, or prompt six, is very aggressively this one, which is... Oh, most recent purchase. The next one is most recent purchase, which I'm interpreting as kind of like within the last like couple of weeks, last month, something like that. Um, and this was for sure in the last couple of weeks. But that is Majesty by Catherine McGee. This is the sequel to American Royals, which I read in December, I want to say, and just absolutely adored. And this is the sequel and I believe series finale of that book and I love it. It is Gossip Girl level drama, but with royalty, and it's great. So I am really excited to get into this one, uh, just to finish out the series because I endured the first one so much, but this is basically set in a world, it's set in the United States, but it's set in kind of like an alternate reality where George Washington became the king of America instead of the first president of America, and these are his descendants in like our modern day time. So, I'm excited to continue with this because the last book ended on like three different cliffhangers and I need to know all of the answers. So, I'm so excited. I'm so excited. <laughs> Number seven. This one. Which is, read a book with nature on the cover with us, grass, flowers, trees, etc. The next one is to read a book with nature on it and like, Interpret this however you will. My interpretation, like leaves, flowers, things that you can find outside, trees, the sun, you know, whatever. Uh, this is a stretch because I really wanted to fit this in this month. So this is what we've picked for that. And that is A Rogue of One's Own by Evie Dunmore. I don't know if you can see this. I'm going to get really close to the mic and I apologize. What? Th that's technically a tree. So like stretching it but it's technically included on the cover so like when this is a companion novel to her first series which was bringing down the duke which i read last february and utterly devoured and loved it's set in like the 19th century 18th century it's set in 1879 is what the first one is set in so around the 18th century um oxford where like the women are trying to get to the right to vote this follows a couple of characters from the first book but I believe timeline wise, this takes place before the events of the first book. Regardless, her writing is amazing. So I really, really, really cannot wait to pick this one up. 
this is a companion like I said it you don't have to have read the first one to read this one but it does take place around like the suffragette movement and this one seems more like enemies to lovers this follows Lucy Lady Lucy who is kind of the head of the Oxford suffragettes and then this like super cocky guy who they don't like each other but due to circumstances you know feelings happen and they get like pushed together and it's glorious goodness <sighs> this is just romance goodness is historical romance goodness and i love every second of it so can't wait to get back with these characters and get back into the writing that i just adore and number eight last pick for february is this one which here we go is da, da, da. Read a cover by. And the very last one, the very last prompt for February is a cover by, which is hard for me because I don't really do what normal people would consider a cover by. Like I don't go and I go, oh, that book has a beautiful cover. I'm going to immediately buy it. That's not really what happens to me. What happens to me is I see a cover and I go, oh, that's really, really pretty. And then I investigate more, see what it's about. And if it's about something I'm interested in, then I'll buy it. So these, for me, cover buys are books that I'm drawn to because the cover is pretty, but I still have to be like interested in it. And I have to read the synopsis before I actually purchase it. I just can't like go in blind, you know? This book that I have chosen is one that I picked up I honestly don't even know last year no probably the year before and it was because I was like scrolling through Barnes and Noble because I was picking up something and this one came across my feed and I thought that the cover was gorgeous and it sounded like something I would be interested in but I kept going and then I just kept thinking about it and that is The Familiars by Stacey Halls this is set in 1612 in England and it kind of revolves around witch trials. This follows our main character named Fleetwood Shuttleworth. What a name, right? Um, but she's pregnant. She's hoping to give her husband the first heir, the first child that they've ever had. But she reads um, a diary or a letter that was hidden for her by the physician that basically says, you won't survive your pregnancy. Like you giving birth, you're not going to survive it. So distraught, she goes out in the field and starts thinking, like just kind of like wandering around and runs into this woman named Alice. And after sharing her like issues and worries with Alice, Alice basically says, I can promise I can help you through this. And Alice is a midwife, but she might use magic. It's not like the, the synopsis doesn't t say like it hints at it, but like it never d definitely says like she can use magic. So I'm really excited to see how this is going to go because I feel like it's going to talk more about feminist issues, especially at this time, rather than like the fantasy. It's going to be like more historical fiction where people think that magic is happening rather than it actually being a fantasy. You, do you know what I'm saying? So I'm excited, but like this cover is the reason I picked it up because the flowers are stunning. I'm excited and for sure picked this one up mostly because of the cover but it does sound interesting so I decided to read it and honestly forgot that I owned this until I uh went perusing my shelves for pretty books so we're gonna finally get around to it so this is a look at the books that I'm hoping to read in the month of February it looks real big but they're all relatively small books so that's good um and I don't really have anything like extra that I want to read in February like there's a couple of arcs that I like to get around to but you know it's a pretty decent, like, this is probably what I'm going to be reading in February. Not much else is going to surprise you. But this was a really good one. I got quite a few romances in there, which was really good. It's exactly what I wanted. So, yay. I'm going to put these down because I'm going to lose a wrist this way. I lost a book that way. But that's really about it. Those are the eight books that I'm planning on reading in February. I hope that you enjoyed this TBR. Let me know if you've read any of the books that I haven't mentioned and what your thoughts on them were. Or if there's a book in February that you are dying to read, please let me know. I'd love to know what you guys are reading. But if you liked this video, and I very much hope that you did, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe down below if you want to be part of this awesome growing family. I've also got all my social media down there as well as other bookish links, so don't forget to check those out, and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!